It's here on Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report. I'm Amy Goodman. The U.S. Supreme Court appears poised to strike down most of the remaining limits on massive spending by wealthy donors on political campaigns. On Tuesday, justices heard arguments in McCutcheon versus Federal Election Commission, which has been referred to as the next Citizens United. Republican leaders and wealthy GOP donor Sean McCutcheon want the Supreme Court to throw out aggregate limits on individual contributions in a single two-year cycle, saying they violate free speech. On Tuesday, the likely swing vote, Chief Justice John Roberts indicated he's prepared to strike down caps on donations to individual candidates, but perhaps not on donations to political committees. The McCutcheon case marks the first major challenge to campaign finance rules since the 2010 Citizens United decision, which opened the floodgates for unlimited corporate spending on elections. For more, we go to Burt Newborn, law professor, founding legal director of the Brennan Center for Justice at NYU Law School. Welcome. Welcome to Democracy Now! Talk about the significance of this week around campaign finance. Well, the importance of the McCutcheon case is it's the first time people have zeroed in on contribution limitations. Um, the law is that expenditures, if you spend your own money, that's now completely uncontrolled. And so you have these extraordinarily wealthy people, the Koch brothers um, uh, or um, um, George Soros on the other side, pouring huge amounts of their own money in. Nothing can be done about that. Uh, up until now, country Contributions, though, were treated differently because the idea of a contribution created the possibility of a quid pro quo deal with, uh, uh, with the candidate. And so contributions could be limited. And there are two kinds of limitations. There's something called a base limitation, which limits the amount that can be given to any particular candidate or any particular uh, committee. And then the aggregate li limitation, which is a total that can be given to everybody. The numbers are huge. I mean, you wouldn't believe it. Um, the existing numbers now are $5,200 for a candidate in an election cycle that you can give that you can give thirty two thousand four hundred dollars on top of that to a political to the national political party ten thousand dollars on top of that to the state party and five thousand dollars to as many PACs as you want and there's an unlimited number of them so, so the only 50, thing that 000. prevents that from spinning out of control uh, to uh, I did the math last night about three point six million dollars each election cycle per person the only thing that prevents that from spinning out of control are the aggregate limitations, and the aggregate limitations are $123,200, and that's what McCutcheon says is too small. During the oral arguments, Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg said, quote, by having these limits, you're promoting democratic participation, then the little people will count some, and you won't have the super affluent as the speakers that will control the elections. Justice Antonin Scalia responded somewhat sarcastically by saying, quote, I assume that a law that only, only prohibits the speech of two Two percent of the country is okay. That was Scalia, well, that's, and that's the that's the gulf that divides uh, the court on these cases. Um, the um, Justice Ginsburg thinks that we should use campaign finance reform to advance equality, so that everybody has a roughly equal um, um, a political influence. Scalia says, "Look, if you're rich, you're entitled to have as much influence as you can buy," um, and that's now been the collision. And the Scalia side has won five to four consistently in recent years. At a rally outside. The Supreme Court Tuesday, Senator Bernie Sanders said unlimited private spending undermines U.S. democracy. The bottom line here is that if we do not want to move this nation to an oligarchic form of society where a handful of billionaires can determine the outcome of these elections, that it is imperative not only that we overturn Citizens United, but that we put a lid on how much people can contribute in elections. <laughs> freedom of speech, in my view, does not mean the freedom to buy the United States government. And on the other hand, you have Sean McCutcheon's lawyer's comments, as Aaron Murphy during our arguments, saying, quote, by prohibiting contributions that are within the modest base limits Congress has already imposed to combat the reality or appearance of corruption, these limits simply seek to prevent individuals from engaging in too much First Amendment activity. Bert Newborn. Well, that's the collision. The collision is that some people like Bernie Sanders says it is too much First Amendment activity when you can spend so much money that you have a hugely disproportionate influence, and they owe you favors later. What kind of a democracy is that? Um, uh, Ruth Ginsburg put it perfectly. She said, if these aggregate limita uh, limita uh, go down, 500 people 
will control American democracy. It will be government for the 500 people, not for anybody else. And that's the risk. Bert Newborn, I want to thank you for being with us. We will certainly continue to follow this case. Bert Newborn, professor of civil liberties and founding legal director of the Brennan Center for Justice at NYU Law School. And that does it for our show.